Hi, this is Pete Lyons with another Let's Play Salesforce video, and today we're kicking off part one of advanced data modeling for Einstein Analytics. So why then the slide with the custom report type editor? Well, we need to start this series, right? And we're gonna be doing that by debunking some myths. There's a belief out there that there are things that you can do with the standard report engine that you cannot do with Einstein, and that is completely untrue. The first of uh, those such myths is parents with or without children. So if we look at this Venn diagram here over on the right, this is gonna result in a report that has one row per child record and one row per parent that has no children. Now normally what we can do in WAVE is just going to be this, where we're only going to have data about parents that actually have child records associated with them. So this is what that looks like. And while this might look like a nice table, the problem is that I actually have four parent records in the system and parent three and four uh, are not present here. So this is the data flow that we would use to create that data set. It's very simplistic. It's one of the most simple data flows that you can create in Einstein. We're just going to digest our parents, digest our children, join them together with an augment, and then register that. And that's going to result in this, uh, which is fine, but we don't have information about parents that don't have children, and that's what we're going to set out to uh, accomplish. In order to do that, we're going to have to build something that looks like this. It's not as complicated as it looks, and we'll walk through it one step at a time. Uh, I do want to call out that currently this editor doesn't uh, allow images to persist, so you can move everything around all nice and neat just the way you like it, and then when you reopen, it's just going to be all random again. So uh, I know that that is something that they're working on for the future. I don't know what shape that's going to take or if or when we're going to see any of that. Not Salesforce. I can't speak to the roadmap but it is something that we can cross our fingers about. So while building this, I did want to leave myself a trail of breadcrumbs, so I added some additional registers to create debug data sets so I could see uh, how this was shaping up as I went along. And then uh, with this sort of thing, normally what you're going to want to do is delete all your debugs when you're done and delete all of those uh, test data sets. This is more the sort of thing that you're going to see in a sandbox during development of complex data flows. You're not going to want to have this in prod. So moving forward, let's get started building it. So this is going to start off in exactly the same way as the other data flow that we saw. Uh, we're going to digest parents, grab some fields, digest children, grab some fields for those. Uh, but this is where the similarities stop. The next thing that we need to do is build an index table. And so first we're going to do a compute expression and we're going to create two fields on that. The fields are going to be called index and source. And the index is just going to be the record ID. Uh, from whatever object we're pulling it off of. This is external uh, data. You're going to want this to be your unique row identifier. Uh, it must be of type text. And then we're going to do uh, just a text field to denote what object this row originally came from. Uh, one important thing to call out is that merge with source must be set to false. We're going to do the same thing with the uh, children. Note how this box is unchecked. When you create these through the UI, uh, it's going to automatically try to check that box for you. You're going to want to make sure that it remains unchecked. And we need these to be exactly identical in structure because our goal is to create a table that's going to have one column for our record IDs and one column denoting what object they originally came from. So then what we do is we append them together using the append transformation. And this is basically like copying uh, rows from Excel and pasting them onto the bottom of a table. So now let's take a look at uh, what that's going to output. This is going to give us a table that's going to have one column for the record IDs, one column denoting what object they originally came from. You'll notice now that we have five children and four parents, just like I said we would. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is join on information about our child records. This is standard augment. Um, our right source is going to be get children. We're, our uh, right uh, key is going to be the ID. But what's a uh, little different about it is that our left source is going to be the, uh, the join index table that we just created, and the key will be that index column. So we're going to go and grab all the fields that we would want off of child, and then we're going to do the same thing with our parents. Again, uh, the left source is now going to be join children since that's the node that it just came through, and that will have our index table with it. And uh, again, we're just going to use the uh, parent's record ID as our right key and just a couple of fields this time. There's not as much information on parent. And this is the table that's, that that's going to create. So now we have um, all of our children records with information about the children and information about their related parents. Uh, but we don't have any insights into what is on these parent records yet. 
and we do still have one row for each even though uh, parents one and two already have the information that we want on the associated child rows. So we are going to need to find a way to remove uh, the two parents that are already being represented through child data. So the next thing that we're going to do is create an augment called self-join. We're actually going to be joining the join parents table to itself. Uh, so what we're going to do is take that as both our left and right sources. On the left key, we're going to use the index column that we originally created. And on the right table, we're going to use child.parent. And what this is basically going to do is it's going to allow us to highlight any parents that have children. And we're going to use uh, lookup single value because we don't actually care what the result is going to be. If they have multiple children, this could become an extremely long string. We just need to know if they have one or more children, so that's fine. The only field that we're going to pull in is index. So that's what this is going to look like. And again, we've got our two parents that have children. These are going to be parents one and two. Um, they're the ones that we found matches on, so we can now identify them as parents with children and purge them from the table. So in order to do that, now we're going to do a compute expression for find dupes. Uh, we could probably filter directly on it, but it's just my personal preference to always have a filter step where we create a filter field to uh, filter on directly. Uh, so we're going to leave merge with source true this time. We're going to create a field called flag. We're basically going to say when that filter index, filter.index field that we've just created uh, through our augment on our self join is not null, then it's a dupe, else keep it. Next, we're actually going to filter the dupes. And we're just going to do flag colon eq colon keep. This is going to preserve all rows that are either children or parents without children. So once we run that, let's take a look at our next debug table. And we'll see that those two rows of parents, without ch or parents with children have successfully been purged. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to join on data about parents without children so that we can actually see those columns that we're concerned with. Uh, we're going to do an augment. Our left source is going to be filter dupes. Our right source is going to be get parent. Um, and we're going to match the index to the ID. Pretty simple. Uh, we're just going to grab the two fields we care about. And that's what this is going to look like. Now the main problem here though is that our parent information for parents without children is being stored off on the right in a different column. And we really need it over here where it's in the same column as information about the children. So how are we going to do that? So next we're going to do a compute expression called align fields. And basically we're going to create new fields for parent name and parent region. A uh, nice bonus of this is that you actually get rid of the uh, relationship pathway when you do this. So it'll save you a bunch of typing when you're adding fields. You don't have to worry about whether or not you need single quotes to avoid data flow errors. Pretty cool. So we're just going to say when parent without dot name is not null, then give me that. Else, give me parent name. So basically we're saying if I've got the data on the right, give me the data on the right. If not, grab the one on the left because I know it's going to be there. We're going to do the same thing for parent region. And the last thing that we're going to need to do is uh, slice off all of those fields that we were only using for operational purposes and only keep the ones that we actually want. Set our slice node to keep mode. This is going to allow us to select just the fields we want to keep. And then all we have to do is register. There it is, our finished data set. And this is what it looks like. I have one row per child, one row per parent. Everything's nicely aligned. And I have all the things I want to see and none of the things I don't. So that's all for tonight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And uh, you know, please check back in the next video in this series. We're actually going to be drop kicking my nemesis, the joined report by creating a data set that has parents with multiple children at the same grain. So make sure to check back for that one. Uh, you know, if you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, tell a friend. And as always, thanks for watching.